Welcome back everyone. This is lecture number 15 and it's about moment generating functions or MGFs. Let's suppose that we have a random variable x with a support script x. Okay. The moment generating function MGF of x is denoted by M subscript x of t and it is defined as follows. The MGF of a random variable x is equal to the expected value of e to the tx. Okay. That's the definition of MGF. Okay. So this definition is true for discrete as well as continuous random variables. So if x is discrete, the MGF is simply the sum over all values of the support of x of e to the tx p of x of little x when x is discrete. When x is continuous, the only difference would be instead of summation we would have an integral over all the support of x of e to the tx times the pdf f of x dx. That's when x is continuous. If the expectation of e to the tx exists, then we say the MGF exists for a random variable x. Why is the expectation of e to the tx called the moment generating function. Recall that the first moment of a random variable x is e to the expectation of x, the second moment is expectation of x squared, third moment is expectation of x to the power of 3 and so on, and the kth moment is expectation of x to the power of k. So if we call mgf, if we call m x of t a moment generating function, we should be able to retrieve the moments if we are given the MGF. But actually the, the kth moment, expectation of x to the k, is the kth derivative with respect to t, t is the k, of the moment generating function when we plug in a value of 0 for t. Alright, let me explain that again. So, you have the moment generating function and you take the first derivative of the moment generating function. So the first derivative with respect to t of the MGF of x. After taking the first derivative, plug in 0 for t. And, and you find that value is the expectation of x, or the first moment of x. Loosely speaking, I could write it in the following way. m prime, meaning the derivative of m with respect to t, and I plug in 0 instead of t. Okay. Likewise, the second moment will then be the expectation of x squared, would be the derivative with respect to t. Remember, this derivative is with respect to t twice when we plug in zero. That's loosely speaking and an appropriate way of writing it that would be the second derivative with respect to t of the moment generating function and then plug in zero for t. Okay? I will make another video proving that this is true. Okay. I will provide a link for the proof of this. Note also that when you plug in 0 into the MGF, okay, what's the MGF? MGF is the moment generating function is the expectation of e to the tx. So if you plug in 0 into the MGF, what happens is you're just finding the expectation of e to the 0 times x. So this is the expectation of 1, this is a constant, so that gives you 1. So when you plug in 0 into the MGF, your value, the value that you find is going to be equal to 1. 
Let's do an example. Let's do an example. All right. Let's say we have a discrete random variable x with the following PMF, probability mass function. So the PMF is given by 3 divided by 4 times 1 over 4 to the power of x. And x could take values of 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to infinity. So let's find the MGF. The MGF of x, mx of t, is equal to the expectation of e to the t of x, which is, since this is a discrete random variable, that's going to be the sum from the support is from 0 to infinity, discrete values from 0 to infinity, of e to the t x times the PMF, which is 3 over 4 times 1 over 4 to the power of x. Okay? Now, I can take out the constant outside of the summation. 3 over 4 times the summation x from 0 to infinity of, remember here, e to the tx is the same as e to the t to the power of x. So I can combine this. This is 1 over 4 to the power of x. This is e to the tx, which is e to the t to the power of x. Combining the two, I would get e to the t divided by 4 to the power of x. Now, you, if you look carefully here, this is a geometric series with a common ratio of e to the t divided by 4. Remember from your calculus, when you have a geometric series summing from 0 to infinity of r, let's say r is a common ratio, to the power of x, okay, this is uh, equal to r to the power of 0, which is 1, plus r to the power of 1, plus r squared, plus r to the power of 3, plus, and so on. This sums to 1 over 1 minus r, when r is less than 1. Okay? Whenever r is less than 1, that summation is equal to 1 over 1 minus r. You, you, you must remember this. This is a very, very crucial uh, identity. Uh, and you would need this in, in the following lectures to come, and, and you would need this in, in exam P. You definitely need this on exam P. So if e to the t divided by 4 is less than 1, so if whenever e to the t divided by 4 is less than 1, then this is going to be equal to 3 divided by 4 times 1 over 1 minus e to the t divided by 4. This implies the MGF of x is 3 over 4 divided by 1 minus e to the t divided by 4, whenever e to the t divided by 4 is less than 1. By the way, which forms an open neighborhood around 0. So by definition, MGF is valid if the expectation of e to the tx exists, in an open neighborhood around 0. What is the expected value of x if we know the MGF? One way to find this, by the way, you could have you could have decided to find the expectation in the following way. The expectation as the, the summation from 0 to infinity of x times 3 over 4 times 1 over 4 to the power of x. It turns out this way is actually much more difficult than this way using the MGF method. Okay, so if I know the MGF, finding it was not very difficult. If I know the MGF, what I have to do is I just need to find the derivative of the MGF with respect to t, and then plug in zero for t. Okay, that gives me the expectation of x. So what is the derivative of the MGF with respect to t? That's the derivative of this quantity, and using power rule and the chain rule, you would find out that this is negative 3 over 4 divided by 1 minus e, let me, 1 minus e to the power of t divided by 4 square, and then utilizing the chain rule, I need to multiply this by negative 
is the t over 4. That's the derivative of the inside here. Okay, so that is equal to 3 over 4 times e to the t divided by 4 times 1 minus e to the t over 4 squared. So when I plug in 0, I, f I get the expectation. So the expectation of x, as we said, is the derivative of the moment generating function evaluated at 0. So plug in 0 for t, so that's going to be uh, plug in 0 on e to the t you'd find e to the power of 0 is 1 here also e to the power of 0 is 1 so I would have 3 divided by 4 over 4 times 1 minus 1 over 4 square and simplify this you would get a value equal to 1 third so the expectation of x is 1 third okay? likewise you could find the second moment the third moment and so on um, before I do one more example I would like to Note the following. Note that the MGF can also be written in the following way. MGF is the ex the expectation of e to the tx. Okay, so if I do a Taylor series expansion of e to the tx, if I have a Taylor series expansion about zero of e to the tx, I would find the following. That would be t times x to the power of 0, t times x to the power of 0, which is 1, plus t times x to the power of 1, divided by 1, which is t times x, plus t times x squared, divided by 2 factorial, plus t times x cubed, divided by 3 factorial, and so on. It's an infinite series. Okay, so this is equal to the expectation of 1, which is 1, plus the expectation of t times x is t times the expectation of x. Plus, now, if you, if you look at this, I can write that as t squared divided by 2 factorial times x squared, but t squared over 2 factorial is a constant but x squared is random so I would need to put the expectation on it okay likewise you see this is going to be t cubed divided by 3 factorial times e to the power of x cubed plus and so on so the another way to write the MGF is in the following way that's going to be um, the sum k equals 0 to infinity of t to the power of k times the expectation of x to the k, which is the kth moment, divided by k factorial. k factorial. So the SOA may give you uh, an example like following they may actually just give you an MGF of a random variable and they tell you it's 1 plus t times some number plus t squared divided by 2 factorial of some number plus and so on so what you need to do is simply figure out oh this is MGF written in the following way so I can reconstruct it to find the moments and then you'd find the moment and you'll be at you'll be able to answer the questions one last example the value of a piece of factory equipment after three years of use is 100 times 0 0.5 to the power of x, where x is a random variable having a moment generating function provided here. Okay. Calculate the expected value of this piece of equipment after three years of use. So if I let y to be equal to 100 times 0 0.5 to the power of x, the question is to find the expected value of y, which is the expected value of 100 times 0 0.5 to the power of x. So since 100 is a constant, I can take it outside of the expectation, and I have the expectation of 0 0.5 to the power of x. Since I know the moment generating function of x, I can rewrite this expectation in the following way. So this is 
100 times the expectation of E, the natural exponent, the log, I, I, I should probably use the natural log of 0 0.5 to the power of x. This is by property of exponents. Okay, this is equal to this expression is equal to 0 0.5 to the power of x. So this is equal to 100 times the expectation of by property of logs. What we know is we can take the power to be the coefficient. So that's going to be e times x times the natural log of 0 0.5. Okay, now you have the MGF evaluated at x, at t, I'm sorry, the MGF evaluated at t equals the natural log of 0.5. Recall, the MGF of x is the expectation of e to the tx, or x times t, it doesn't matter. So I have x, I have t here, so this is t, the value of t. You are given the MGF. What you need to do is simply plug in the value, the natural log of 0.5 into t here. So this is going to be equal to the MGF of x evaluated at the natural log of 0.5. And that equals 100 times 1 over 1 minus 2 times the, log, the natural log of 0 0.5. Put that in your calculator and you will find a value equal to 41.9060. Okay, thanks for watching this lecture.